Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Teamer Colored combo deck revolving around all the Skull Bombs introduced in Phyrexia All Will Be One. And the reason we're playing these is because they synergize very nicely with Myria, Scholar of Antiquity. 3 mana, 3 3 legendary creature lets us tap an untapped non token artifact we control to add green to our mana pool. So if we play Myria, then we can now potentially tap any Skull Bombs we have in play to generate a green mana, and we can also sacrifice them for one mana to draw a card. So any Skull Bomb we play essentially pays for itself to draw another card, which gets us deeper into the deck to potentially play more and more Skull Bombs. Now what does that accomplish? Well, hopefully we also have a Third Path Iconoclast on the battlefield, which says whenever we cast a non-creature spell, create a 1-1 Soldier Artifact Creature Token, so an Iconoclast alongside Myria can generate an army of 1-1 tokens. Then we can also potentially use Myria's second ability, tapping two untapped non-token artifacts we control to exile the top card of our library, and we may play it this turn. So that's potentially a way to generate card advantage and dig deeper towards our missing combo pieces, which also include the Enthusiastic Mechanauts, a 2-mana 2-2 artifact creature flyer that says artifact spells we cast get a 1-mana discount. So now we can cast all our Skull Bombs for free, which means they can actually start generating mana if we have a Miriam play, since they can tap for green. Then we also have two copies of the Dragon Spark Reactor, which is our author main win condition alongside Iconoclast. The reactor picks up a charge counter whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under our control. So not only do the Skull Bombs give the reactor an extra charge counter, but hopefully we also have an Iconoclast in play, making 1-1 soldiers for each Skull Bomb we play. So this will quickly add up to present a lethal reactor, which can be sacrificed to deal damage to an opposing creature and an opposing player at the same time. And then we've got a bit more card draw with the Reality Chip, since I've got a soft spot for playing spells off the top of my deck, and not only can we do that with Myria in a way, but we can also use our Reality Chip to reconfigure it to one of our creatures, and then we can play lands and spells off the top of our library, and then once we assemble a Reality Chip with Myria, with Mechanaut, we can start playing Skull Bombs for free off the top of our deck, hopefully find Iconoclast and Reactor at some point to close out the game. For most of the Skull Bombs, we're going to use the first ability to draw a card for 1 mana, since we don't even have white mana for the Basilica Skull Bomb, or black mana for Dross Skull Bomb. Could potentially use a red ability on the Furnace Skull Bomb, but there's no oil counter synergies. The green ability on the Maze Skull Bomb, also not incredibly useful to pump one of our creatures, but that one could actually come up. The blue ability on a Surgical Skull Bomb, however, can actually come in handy, bouncing a creature back to its owner's hand, so that can give us a tiny bit of interaction. And then we also have two copies of Mishra's Research Desk, which can be sacrificed to exile the top two cards of our library, and then choose one of them until the end of our next turn. We may play that card. can also be unearthed for one and a red, so that can also provide a little bit of card advantage. And then the mana base has a relatively low land count, since we want to make sure we can keep playing Skull Bombs off the top of our deck instead of being stuck with a bunch of lands, which we can still maybe exile with Miria's second ability, or we can just draw into the land by sacrificing a Skull Bomb, which is also an option. So plenty of mana fixing, including the new Copper Line Gorge. The Pain Lands aren't too bad in this deck, since we're often tapping them for colorless mana, which doesn't cost us any life. And then I've got a couple basics to search up in case of an opposing Boseju, since we don't have a Tri-Land to search up in the Teamer Colors, unfortunately. Also no room for the Channel Lands, which could offer a bit more interaction, since we need all the mana fixing we can get our hands on. So we'll be playing this in the play queue, since it's not the most competitive deck, but hopefully we can still have some fun. So let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Probably hang on to Skull Bomb until after we play Iconoclast. And then I don't need green mana until turn 3, so I'm just gonna play a Coast tapped. Backup Iconoclast could be useful. Opponent appears to be on a more controlling deck. Could also wait to play Iconoclast and then play Skull Bomb right away to get immediate value. Although we do have a backup. So, yeah, not sure what to play around here. If it's counter spells or spot removal. Fraska's fall could have been prevented potentially by making some tokens first. Can try it now. So at least we're safe from another fall. Drown an Icker. Gonna proliferate the poison. 
Okay, so now we're just left with a bunch of Skull Bombs that don't do anything. Can play them for free, however. Would have been nice with the Iconoclast. So I'll start by playing one, sacrifice it, see what's next. And uh, hang on to the blue Skull Bomb for now. Reality Chip. Yeah, I should probably just play these out now. Next turn we can play and reconfigure Reality Chip. And then hopefully cast some free Skull Bombs off the top. Give Raska. Can maybe take out a Mechanaut or just start proliferating here. That's fine. Okay, so step one, reality chip. Land on top, enter stamped. Still probably going to reconfigure and we'll do it onto the 1-1 one -one token. Since Mechanaut's already a high value target. Play a land, Iconoclast coming up. So probably worth it to wait on the research desk. Can attack Vraska. And uh, pass a turn. Vraska keeps drawing. Proliferate up to 4 poison. And a Teferi, that's okay. Can bounce a token with our Skull Bomb, actually. And Curiosity to draw to grow the token. So we can finish off one of the two Planeswalkers here. We'll have to decide which one. But first off, let's make some tokens of our own. Another Mechanauts. I'll probably have to give up on, but we can maybe find another Skull Bomb along the way here. Since we'll draw off this one. Perfect. Keep it going. And there's Miria. Just what we needed. Research desk, make another 1-1. One, one. And then, I guess finish off Vraska here. It's the only option. Hope there's no sweeper. And then Miria with a ton of non-token artifacts in play can generate a lot of mana too. Blast zone on one. Oh no. That can blow up all my one mana artifacts here. Who's that handsome devil? Opponent's looking at it. Yeah. It's gonna be Augury to proliferate up to two counters. Maybe they're going for my two drops now. Which would also be very effective. Kill Iconoclast, Mechanaut and the Reality Chip. Although we still have a Mechanaut in hand. So... We'll see. Void Wings. I guess they're not going for Blast Zone if they're playing a hybrid. And Inquiry. Okay, opponent's tapped out. And we can once again bounce the Spirit token. So play land of the top. And then for now, keep playing Skull Bombs. Hit a land. So time for Miria. Leave up at least one blue source. And then Miria can help us exile the top card. Can do it again. Could also just draw with the Skull Bombs now, which is maybe fine as well. Although, keeping them in play keeps us with more mana on the following turn. Another Miria. I guess that one I want to draw as insurance. So let's do that. Sacrifice a useless Skull Bomb. Okay, keep playing these off the top. Could also activate the research desk if we'd like. Just two lanes, so that one's going to waste, but we found a reactor, which is what we wanted. Leave blue mana for a skull bomb activation here. So we'll tap reactor for mana. Tap this for mana. This makes blue. Bounce the spirits. Mechanaut on top. Can make an extra mana, draw with a useless skull bomb. 
Find another one. Okay. Can keep going a little bit longer. Okay. And then we may be able to set up lethal with our reactor, unless our opponent sacrifices blast soon, which is now the concern. Sadly, oil counters, not the same as charge counters, so can't use the Red Skull Bomb to help out the reactor. Okay, uh, can still tap a reality chip here to make a mana. Sack the Red Skull Bomb. Okay, now we're at the end of the line, I think. And we'll start attacking. Can send everyone at Teferi, except for the equipped token. And then we'll still be able to take it out here. Although I may not want to send the Mechanauts, which can block Hybrid in case they're close to poisoning me, so maybe this is better. They can block Iconoclast, and then Teferi would survive. Hmm, how much do we value keeping the Flyer back? That may be more important, actually. So we'll see if they want to keep Teferi alive. Opponent lets it go. Okay. And then next turn between our attacks and... Dragon Spark Reactor, we should have enough damage to kill them, but we'll see what they decide to do. Whether it involves Blast soon. I'll accept a trade. Bone can likely proliferate it back. So they're not planning to activate Blast soon, it seems. Inquiry. Up to 7 poison, so if they can proliferate 3 more times, we're dead. Prologue also counts. 2 mana left. Okay, 9 poison, so glad we kept our flyer back. And our opponent seems pretty dead on the way back, so unless they go swamp into the 1 mana proliferate instant, we should be good. Well, this was quite the game. Managed to go off through a couple of removal spells. Faced a few planeswalkers along the way. And yeah, it doesn't get closer than 9 poison. Looks like our opponent has disconnected, so we'll have to wait it out. But as soon as we get to untap, we can turn the team sideways. And no need to activate reactor. Alright, and our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hands got potential. Reactor great alongside Iconoclast. Couple skull bombs to kick things off. So we'll have to decide how to sequence probably Reactor first, if we suspect removal. All the Iconoclast also makes a token once we cast the Reactor, although the Reactor won't pick up the extra charge counters. Opponent holding up two planes. Yeah, I think I just go for a Reactor here. Something like a Loran I guess could be bad, but we'll have to get that out of the way. And then next for an Iconoclast, play a Skull Bomb. Could also wait until we potentially play a second Iconoclast. Alright, Restoration's fine. His opponent on kind of a white mid-range deck. And then playing the blue Skull Bomb just in case we need to bounce a creature. A reactor up to three counters already. And a Spirited Companion returned by the Restoration. Always nice, gets to draw. Opponent with four mana. Is this a lay down arms for Iconoclast, perhaps? Nope, Ossification instead also makes sense. Picked up another Skull Bomb. So, interestingly, I could wait to play Iconoclast until I have a bit more mana to make more tokens right away. I think it's still fine to run one out there. And then play a Skull Bomb we're planning to sacrifice, like the Furnace one. And then if they cannot answer Iconoclast here, next turn we get to go off with three more Skull Bombs in hand. Would love to find our Mechanauts, would love to find Myria.
It's gonna be the Dawn Sky. Big 5 4 flyer. That doesn't mess with our plan. And good trade for companion. Alright, found Miria. Perfect. So that allows me to play all those skull bombs for essentially free. Since we can tap this for green. Play skull bomb. Which pays for itself. Reactor I can also tap. And we can also start exiling cards of the top of my library. But let's get the skull bombs in play first. Reactor up to 11 counters. So, tap reactor and a skull bomb. Exile the top cards. Haven't played a land yet, so that can be played here. And then I can start sacrificing skull bombs as well to maybe find something useful. Reality chip I cannot cast right now, so we'll sacrifice one more skull bomb. Okay. And then no attacks. Very close to presenting lethal thanks to our reactor. Can our opponent find an answer to it? Ossification doesn't work. That's only creatures and uh, planeswalkers, but sadly Loran, the perfect answer here. Alright, so all our work on the reactor has been erased. But we still have a decent board state. Can quadruple block Architect without putting any of our important creatures in harm's way. If they channel an Iganjo, that's fine by me. Okay, so probably don't want to play the land right away in case we find a land in exile with Miria. Reality chip seems like a fine starting point. Can also be reconfigured here, land on top. So tap reality chip for green mana. And then tap all the skull bombs for mana as well. Need blue to reconfigure. Reconfigure onto Iconoclast perhaps. Alright, Mechanaut, perfect. So now we can play skull bombs for free off the top. Skull bomb from hand also works. Keep making more tokens. And then I could either draw or exile the top card. I think for now, probably just draw by sacking a skull bomb. Play another one. Another Mechanauts. I probably want to draw instead of exile. Another Miria I also want to draw in case they answer the first one. So Sack Skull Bomb to draw. And keep going. Now I could maybe exile the top cards and keep some Skull Bombs in play to generate mana next turn. Tapping Mechanauts and a Skull Bomb. Another land. So, yeah, I can still draw with a Skull Bomb, but I wouldn't be able to exile anything anymore. So now I might be fine to pass a turn. No attacks. Next turn I could also use a blue Skull Bomb to bounce the Dawn Sky. Put on Sacrificing Reliquary to draw one card, just an enchantment, no artifact. Okay, so we've got all the pieces in play. Iconoclast, Miria, and Mechanaut. Reactor has been answered, but there's another one in the deck we can find. Otherwise, we want to find more Iconoclasts to make tokens with. 
Ossification probably goes for Myria. They don't know we found another one. And it looks like Mechanaut is next. So we've got replacements for both. Take five. Loran also attacking. Possible they have another in hand. I'm fine trading off here. Okay, Wandering Emperor. That's totally fine. If they pump Loran, they're not exiling Mechanaut. Okay, land on top, but it's a Copper Line Gorge. Is that one I don't really want to play since I need all the mana I can get my hands on this turn? So, start by playing Miria, I think. Leaving as much red and blue as possible. And then maybe exile the top card. Okay, Skull Bomb we can play. Sheevan Reef we can play as well. And keep going. And then we still have the mana to activate the blue Skull Bomb. Another Iconoclast is also a good draw here. So make sure to keep blue and red available. Okay, so we've got 29 cards remaining, still quite a few. So Myria can exile the top card. Could start cycling some of my Skull Bombs. Could also just uh, bounce the Dawn Sky so we can pressure Wandering Emperor. Opponent's got two blockers remaining. So we'd have to attack with Iconoclast to make sure we kill Emperor, which may be worth it. Um, so yeah, let me do that first. Get to draw, gorge on top. So, make a mana, sack a skull bomb. Another Myria we can also draw. Mechanaut will be attacking. Another Myria. Okay, time to attack. And then all at Emperor. And then we'll see them trade for Iconoclast. Eda 1 1, Emperor down. And we've got a pretty nice board state here. Opponent can replay Dawn Sky, we can bounce it again. We can also use a green Skull Bomb to pump one of our creatures, although we're pretty far from presenting lethal. My main concern is that the last reactor is somewhere at the bottom of our library, since we could use it to help close out the game. Our swords will cross again. Loran may as well draw, since we've got all the cards in the world here. So it's probably going to benefit the opponent more than it benefits me, but Pona still doesn't want to. Miria exiled, that's fine. And there's a the Dawn Sky again. Okay, Skull Bomb on top, although now we don't have Reality Chip. Reconfigured. Start by playing Miria. Make some mana. Bounce with Skull Bomb. Play Skull Bomb. And we can cycle through a few of these.
Okay, research desk we could play. Maybe it is time to reconfigure here. Reconfigure onto Myria, since that way we play around Wandering Emperor. And keep going. Haven't played a land yet. More Skull Bombs. Can maybe sacrifice the research desk, leaving Red Mine untapped. So we can play Reactor if we find it. Just two lands, that's fine. And draw with a Skull Bomb. Thirteen cards remaining, so yeah, I don't think reactor is going to be a factor in this game. Although there it is, speak of the devil. Can we get a few more counters on it? Don't have blue mana for reality chip, so we'll just draw it here using Miria for mana. Another Iconoclast, I also wouldn't mind drawing. Could also just uh, pass a turn after getting an attack in. Made enough tokens with Iconoclast to present lethal next turn. And hope for the best. Still have a couple cards remaining, so if our opponent does somehow top deck a sweeper, we can still maybe rebuild in time. Opponent trades for Iconoclast. Falls to 10, and we'll pass. Can get rid of a few tapped lands. Okay. So, big turn for the opponents. Can they get back in the game? Replaying Dawn Sky is not gonna do it. They need a sweeper, and possibly also an answer to Reactor. Reliquary goes digging. So, no mana for a farewell, which was my main concern. And a Sarah Paragon, that's fine. Okay, looks like we got there. Could just send the team sideways here and that'll do it. But let's activate the reactor to clear a Paragon and then attack all out. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable enough. Got a reality chip as our card draw engine to go with Mechanauts. Although the poison deck can be pretty quick to kill us. So, fine to play a research desk on one. Turn to Mechanaut, cast a one mana reality chip. Duelists, yeah, that represents a lot of poison as well. So, Mechanaut could essentially trade for Duelist, opponent can just make it unblockable and attack past it. But at least I'll have played a bunch of free spells. So that seems fine. As opposed to going for Reality Chip, which the opponent can also attack past using Skrelv. Could also see an NX Sentry Exile or one creature. Chorus into a Drown instead. Proliferates the poison. So this one could be over quickly. Okay, reality chip can see what's next, or we can activate a research desk. A research desk could exile Miria, which I can play next turn. Can start there. Alright, just a skull bomb. So I'll play reality chip. Which at least forces a screll activation. And then next turn we can keep going. So Duelist getting an additional Toxic 1 with Double Strike still represents 4 Poison, and Avraska's Fall is just lethal here. Alright, that was a quick game, as promised. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's missing some of our creatures, but an early reactor is nice, since we'll at least be able to put a bunch of counters on it. So, yeah, turn on Gorge seems fine. And then we'll hang on to the one drops until after we play reactor. Going on black-green. Iconoclast was quite a draw. I think I'm still tempted to play reactor first, so we don't expose Iconoclast to removal right away, and then we can at least get one token out of the deal. And then having a token left over is going to be important with Reality Chip. Opponent a black green deck with Bushwhack, so probably an Obliterator fight deck. Okay, another Iconoclast is nice, in case they answer the first one. And I'll play the blue Skull Bomb in case we need to bounce an opposing creature. Could also be a nice answer to Obliterator, forcing them to replay it. Would love to just play another Iconoclast. Skull Bomb make two tokens. Flash Gorger we don't mind. Okay. So let's keep going. Pass it back. Can triple block Flash Gorger potentially. Tail swipe, fair enough. So if they attack now, I just have to double block. It's the second fight spell, Tail Swipe. Okay, that's too bad. Both Iconoclasts answered, but we found a Myria, that makes up for it. So play Myria, and then can play a Skull Bomb for free. And still work on the reactor. So tap this for mana. Can sacrifice it to draw. And also tap our reactor here for what it's worth. Could also exile the top card since we haven't played a land yet, although we won't be able to play some of the more expensive cards. But uh, yeah, I guess it's worth it to maybe hit a land drop. Alright, not a reality chip, not the end of the world. So we'll pass it back. A reactor on eight counters already. And there's a Defiler Vigor, which we can bounce before it does too much damage. Okay, sequencing now. So, start by playing Reality Chip, see what's on top of our deck. Seems like a good starting point. Mechanauts, that's exciting. So yeah, let's make some mana. Activate Skull Bomb, Bounce Defiler, and then we can still play Mechanauts. And a counter. And then we can draw with a Skull Bomb, pick up our Iconoclasts. And then we can sack another Skull Bomb to draw. Okay, so no more activations left, pass it back. Opponent is at 30, since they gained a lot of life with those Flash Gorger fights. So, may not be able to close out the game next turn. But we've got everything set up now to combo off with the Reactor. Iconoclast on top, so let's reconfigure Reality Chip as soon as possible. Play Iconoclast. Another Mechanaut I wouldn't be able to play, but it's just a matter of time until we find more Skull Bombs to completely take over. Alright, so we got to see our Myria Bomb Squad deck in action. And yeah, the deck's very impressive once it starts going off, once you assemble all the different pieces. It does take a while to get there, and against most aggressive best of one decks, especially on the ladder, you're not gonna have the time to get all those pieces in play, so I wouldn't recommend it as a competitive option, but if you just want to cast a bunch of spells off the top of your deck, this may be the deck for you. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.